Hello, welcome to my channel, In Flight Music. My name is Ian, and today I want to go over parallel tracks. So parallel effects are a great way to get some extra oomph and excitement in your individual inserts. You could basically think of them as the same thing as a send track. I actually covered send effects last week in my send effects versus insert effects tutorial. So today I just dropped a new beat for my 12th day on the 30 day beat challenge that I'm doing. And I realized that the 808 really wasn't standing out as much as I'd like it to be, but it's already uploaded on YouTube if you wanna go listen to it. But uh, I'm definitely not happy with the way the 808 turned out. This also goes to show that you probably shouldn't mix when you're tired, which is exactly what happened. But to make up for it, I'm going to do this parallel tutorial to fix my 808. I'm gonna go ahead and play the 808 before and the 808 after. So before, if you're listening on the f on a phone, you probably couldn't really hear that 808, but now I pretty much guarantee that the 808 is audible for sure. So let me go over some of the effects that I added on the individual insert and let you listen to what that 808 so sounded like by itself without the mix. So here's what the 808 sounds like by itself without any of the effects on the insert. And then the very first effect is Fruity Wave Shaper, and I'm using a preset called Kinda Tan. And the reason I'm using this is actually there's a guy named Sicky Beats who is an awesome producer in his own right. He just hit 10K on his YouTube channel. Definitely go check him out. He definitely drops gems all the time. But yeah, he mentioned this preset in his live beat critique a couple nights ago, and it just adds a little extra something to your 808s. Just a little extra saturation, a few extra harmonics. It just warms up the sound a little bit. And then I have Fruity Fast distor Distortion after that. This is pretty much the default preset. It's still on A. Just a couple of the knobs tweaked a little bit. And then I have Fruity Parametric EQ with a cutoff right around 28 hertz and a cutoff right around 11,000 hertz. And then a little boost here in the low end around 46 hertz and 2300 and 200. What I went ahead and did was send this over to a parallel channel, which I labeled Parallel Bus in my FL Studio mix template. And to do that, you just right click on any of these bottom arrows and just click route to this track or side chain to this track. That way it starts at zero and then you could just increase the volume however much you wanna to send to that track. You could tell that I'm not sending the full signal all the way. And another thing that you'll notice is that this volume is turned way, way down. And the idea of a parallel track is really trying to get color and character out of the current track that you have. So what you're doing on this track is going overboard, going extreme with your effects. And then you're just tucking that overall sound underneath the original sound that you had. So right here, you'll see that we're going really extreme with these effects. So the first effect I have on my parallel track is Fruity Fast Distortion. And then after Fruity Fast Distortion, I added another layer of distortion. So I'm distorting the harmonics that were added from Fruity Fast Distortion. That's a previous tip that I mentioned in my FL Studio stock effects plugins video. So in Fruity Blood Overdrive, I'm pretty much just cranking up the color all the way to the max and pumping up the preamp. And then on the preband and the post filter, I'm filtering out some of the high end sounds.
again, this is to dirty up the track. So it, we're not actually trying to add, make this sound pretty. We're trying to get it sound sounding pretty nasty here. So now we have Fruity Parametric EQ, and this is when you'll see crazy EQ moves on parallel tracks. So we had the low end boosted, quite a bit of the high end boosted, and then we're pretty much just dipping the middle. And that's typically what you'll see on a parallel track because the idea is to bring up the frequencies that are not as audible. So typically human hearing is more focused on the middle frequencies. So when you bring up that high end of an 808 and the uh, low end of an 808, you're gonna hear the 808 a lot better. And let's go ahead and compare that to the original. And the new one. And when it's in the mix, it sounds like this. Versus. I mean, it's a night and day difference. And another thing that I did here, this is probably the most important tip of the entire video. You want to flip the phase because if you don't, you're going to have a lot of phase cancellation. I'm not gonna get into details about what that is, but and when you play two sounds exactly identical to each other and you flip the phase, they will cancel each other out. But basically what we have done here, because we're sending this 808 into a parallel track, a copy of itself, and we're adding these other effects. Well, now we're shifting the phase relationship of that 808 a little bit. So we wanna flip the phase in order to get the relationship back to where the wave shape, waveform looks more similar to each other again. And by doing that, you're gonna increase the power and the original thump of the 808. So here's what it sounds like without it. And with it. So you can hear a dramatic difference in power coming from that 808. So that's where uh, flipping this polarity right here, reverse polarity is what it's called in FL Studio, uh, that will get you back into phase alignment for the most part. You're still gonna have some phase cancellation but you're just picking between the two which one sounds better. So some of you might be asking, why didn't I just add these effects directly on the 808 and then just use this mix knob? Then this big, huge EQ that I have going on here is going to affect the original 808. So now I'm gonna have all these weird EQ moves on the original sound. So this way I could still keep the original 808 intact playing as is and then I'm just adding this, this character to that 808. So those are two very different things than adding all these effects and then using the mix knob to just add percentages to that. It also allows me to control the overall level of just these effects. And then on top of that, I have all of my parallel buses or all my parallel tracks going into this parallel bus. And then I can control the overall signal of the parallel bus if I wanted to. But since I only have this parallel bass track going into this parallel bus, all I did was just add a limiter to do sidechain compression with the kick. And that way, every single time the kick hits, all of that extra energy coming from the uh, parallel bass track is being ducked down every time the kick hits. Definitely check out my three ways to sidechain in FL Studio tutorial. Drop a comment in the comments section and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.